Yes, please. Over to you, Marcus. Well, hello again and um, welcome, Rossi. Luke Cameron Ross, um, a local lad, obviously from Bristol, um, only 21 years of age, 19th of July, 99. Okay, so right. you're not a millennial. Okay, welcome. Um, how have you found it so far, Rossi? Yeah, it's been good. It's been tough the last week or so, but it's good to see all the lads, good to see yourself, and I'm um, looking forward to the season ahead. Yeah, and just to put um, a little bit more context and detail into where you've been, you've been at Bristol Rovers since you was 10 years of age. So yeah. this is the first season you've come, come away at. Does it feel strange, or what's the biggest cha challenges you feel you're going to face? Um, it didn't feel strange to start off with, to be honest, but after everything was announced on Monday, I had a lot of messages from people you don't really think about within the club. And it did kind of hit home a little bit, but I'm fortunate enough to find something that I'm really looking forward to at Chippenham and hopefully I can just crack on with it and not think too much about Rovers, really. And I think, Cookie, looking at that, um, and I know you've, Rossi's been at Rovers since he was 10, and the only time he's probably been out has been working under yourself. So you've obviously got a lot of faith in him. So... Um, it's quite a good outlook and that's probably down to his really good attitude, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. And um, it was nice to see that um, our press officer, Will, um, actually got us onto Sky TV. And when I, when I seen that flick across uh, and we seen Chippenham Town and Luke Russ and that, that lovely combination mixed together, that was uh, exciting to see and, and, and great to see as well. That's when I knew I had him. So whatever we <laughs> promised him, we we don't care about now, mate, because we got him. He signed him. <laughs> so, and look, I know I shouldn't really say this, but all coaches and managers have their favourites, and there's no surprise that you're Cookie's favourite. And I, I guess you know that, and the other lads know that, don't they? Because he's well, quite often said the, lad, the, the lads have been giving me a bit of stick because the other night, I'm sure he did shout across the pitch at training. He went, Dad, Dad. <laughs> I went, Luke, please. I'm not your dad, all right? I've never been down to Bristol once, nightclub in about 20 years ago. Um, and it just, it cannot be me. Cannot be me. <laughs> Someone said to me, why does Cookie like Rossi so much? And um, there, was, there was things like, well, Cookie's position, played centre midfield, tough tackling, worked hard, got the ball back. Um, is that probably why, Cookie? Because you see why elements of what you used to do? What you used to do? Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, funny, actually. I think it's funny when actually. Um, you get into management and you start picking teams, you, you'd like the team to reflect your, your personality, your character, maybe a little bit the way that you used to play as well. And I do, I do see a lot in him, um, but I do with the other players as well because I'm just not going to have anybody who's not prepared to work 110%. You know, there's, there's going to be certain times this season when we're not going to have the ball a lot within the games. And, uh, you know, we need people like him and we need the rest of the lads to knuckle down, keep the shape, um, do lots of sliding and screening. And that's, you know, what he does well is he listens and he tries to implement what you're trying to get across as a coach. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been great working with him in the past. And I'm really looking forward to the future and being part of his future and hopefully the clubs over the next sort of two or three seasons really yeah well me and Oski also like we, we were discussing it and we both said by well, similarities from your game to Russ's game because you used to kick the ball out a lot and not pass to our team <laughs> so it, it really echoes what you do so um we kind of uh, guessed why you liked uh, it he, he kicked it out so many times the other night at training I shouted to him I said Rusty, is the ball flat? <laughs> <laughs> I thought someone was injured, kept kicking out. But I thought his, his mum and dad was on the bank and kept kicking the ball out to him. I know. Well, look, we have a laugh and a joke about it, but I've got to say, um, I only worked with you a little bit at Gloucester and um, towards the end of last year, Rusty. And I thought, summer for a young person to sit in that midfield. Um, and put out fires before they become a fire. So you just slipped into areas where people like um, Reese was pushing on as a fallback, and you just went and sit in that kind of half space where if Frank broke down, you kind of stopped the attack, won the ball back, and then kept the momentum with Chippenham. And not only did I see that, I know a lot of the fans did because 
chatting to him in the bar afterwards, they also rec- recognised what a good job you did. And that's got to uh, be pleasing for you that the fans have taken to you so quickly. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was a massive part of me coming back as well. I had a, I loved my time in the club last year and I, I almost fell in love with it really because m- one of my favourite things is celebrating after, after the game. And when we were on a good run last year, winning games, first thing, obviously, yourself and Osk like to do it as well, is going to say thank you to the fans. So I think the fact that I go over, it kind of works both ways. But I mean, in terms of my, my game, I'd play the same whether I was playing against under 18s team or against Barcelona or whatever. I'd play the same, I'd just get the ball down, try and give it to the better players that can do other stuff that I can and fill in for them where I can. So I've, all, I've always done that when I was younger and hopefully I can continue to do it. And it's such an important position, though. We, we have a laugh and a joke about Didier Deschamps, the water carrier cookie. But those roles, you see it with Man City, with Rodri and Fernandinho. How important is that role? It's vitally important, mate. Because, um, I know he's, he's taking the mick out of himself a little bit when he says he gives it to better players. But I don't think we... He'll, he'll probably not get player of the season, but... I'll tell you what, if you, if you really analyse his game and you actually see what he does with the mileage that he runs within the game, if we're going to be as attacking as what we were um, last season, which is basically we become a 4-2-4. So we're playing four forwards up front. We need to have the safety valve behind us because we're expecting Hanksy and Callum um, and Ricky and people like that to be joining in. But we need to see that. And, you know, he, he can score goals as well. He's, he's yeah. a strike on him, you know. He, 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 he'll get forward if we want to. If if we're losing the game and we've got, you know, five, ten minutes to go and it's 1-0, then obviously we're going to chuck him up and get him up high up, high up the pitch. And he's he's clever enough to do that. But I just think we it's been a really underestimated role in the English game over the last 20 years and probably in the last three or four years, more people and more coaches are recognising that. And, you know, you can get back in the Football League, you can play at a really good non-league standard. If you master that art of playing the DCM, uh, defensive centre midfield player, then it, 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 is, it is not easy. It's not easy at all to do that. And a lot of other players will get all the acclaim and all the plaudits, you know, and he'll, he'll walk in after the end of the game and, you know, sometimes there was only us three that was going up to him and saying, you know, well done. Not, not so much at Chippenham, but at the previous club. And, um, you know, I just think he is so important. So I'm so pleased to have him because I just think that he allows us uh, to attack with six players and defend with the five players, you know, with, with the back four. So, um, you yeah, know, brilliant for us. I think, um, for me, the last five or six games... Um, we were playing, like you said, four-two-four, um, playing against maybe a four-three-three, where there's three players in that centre midfield, and yourself and Callum outrun the other three midfielders. So you're doing the work of those three mid- midfielders, and you probably towards the start, Callum was edging you, and then towards the end, I think you you probably edged Callum, and you were our best player in the last four or five games. Um, and I see you celebrate a tackle. Um, uh, like how some people celebrate a goal, celebrate a goal. Um, um, it's, uh, it's a great asset to have that you can just work that out at your young age and like Cookie said hopefully in the future you might then go and kick on do you see that's where you want to go Rossi? Yeah yeah definitely I'm not um, I'm not giving up the dream yet I mean I had another year at Rovers and I spoke to the manager at Rovers and he was he was really honest with me I respect him a lot because he, he said "There's you're, you're probably not going to feature for the first team this year so I respected that and I obviously was speaking to Cookie throughout the summer and decided to join Chippenham basically on, on what happened last year. I mean, towards the end of last year, some of the football we were playing, I've never been in an attacking team like that where we were just, in spells in 20-minute games, we were just constantly in their half, especially the Willstone game. I mean, they absolutely robbed the league last year and we made them look silly for 25 minutes of the game. So, I mean, I'm definitely not giving up the dream yet, but I just want to get get down, get as many games as I can in this year. Hopefully we do well as a team and get, get a bit of interest and hopefully move back up the Football League ladder. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the thing, Cookie. For any young player, if we're being successful as a club, the players are being successful and that means 
with that comes people knocking at a higher level to try and take your better players. Yeah, definitely. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think we, we, we should all try and get better and you know, be ambitious in our lives, whether it's normal work life or whether it's football. So if we can be part of any players that join Chippenham Town over the next two or three seasons, the ultimate goal for the club is to try and get into the conference. This year, um, it's a little bit of consolidation because we spent a lot of money on the stand and the, and the chairman uh, quite rightly has prioritised that and we agreed with that. Um, so, you know, if we can get into the top 10, I think that'd be great because then we can see where we are. If we, if we manage, you know, something like 15 or whatever, then we probably have to recruit a couple more players than we want to. But w- what we're doing is we're sowing the seeds now with three or four players and then we're going to see how we get on over this next season and, and then basically have a little look at what, what we need to do. Um, with ease back into pre-season, uh, and I say that by we've only done a few sessions because unfortunately the, the, the league um, start dates move cookie. Yeah. So who's impressed you most over the last um, three, three stroke four sessions? Well, unlike a lot of non-league clubs that I could mention, we haven't had the, uh, the lads back too early because I didn't, I didn't believe it was right. I didn't think it was ethically right or morally right to get them back and start training as a group um, with COVID-19 um, you know, around the place. And obviously, from our point of view, we just didn't want anybody to get it, anybody's relations. So what we've done is we, we stuck all the lads on Strava for a month uh, for them for the previous coming to training. Uh, in the pre-season camps and so we've been able to monitor them by them sending in their runs um, and the schedule over the last four weeks so we knew and that we come back last week at Stanley Park last Tuesday night we knew roughly that everybody was reasonably fit didn't we so yeah. that, that's been a great tool for us that's been something that we we will definitely use again for for next uh, season close season period and um, I can't say that there's really been one person that is really outshone, but I just think that the attitude of the lads, you know, nobody's getting paid, they're coming in, they're 45 minutes to an hour early, we're, we're getting there an hour early uh, to set up, and we've been impressed with the lads' attitude to get there and want to want to crack on. We all can't wait for the season to start, and, you know, at this moment in time, there's a massive commitment from people to, to be the best that they can and that's uh, you know it's commendable and uh, it's, it's brilliant to see actually and for you Rossi um, obviously apart from yourself anyone really impressed you about the, the new players or some of the tries um, well yeah I think, I think everyone's come back fit I mean I can only speak for myself but it's, it, with the corona break and missing football so much it's only made me hungrier and I think I can see that in a few of the other lads but I've been impressed with everyone, really. Obviously, Ryan Case has come back fit. He's done well in the running. I mean, everyone's fit, really. We've got a lot of trialists that are looking to impress. I remember being in a situation when I was younger and when you're on trial, you just want to go that extra mile to try and get a contract. So, I think everyone's come back really good and we're looking forward to our pre-season friendlies, get, get, get match fit, hopefully ready for the first game of the season. Yeah, and then talking about that hunger, when we were coming in and we were discussing it, Cookie, Bosky was chatting about how hungry he was, but he had about 16 packets of skips. So not, he weren't, he weren't running him, he was just eating all the time. Um, good old Os. Um, Luke, whenever we do this, um, unfortunately mm-hmm. we do a quiz. Um, okay. And you, you've got no worries, we've got a lot of thick players, so you're not going to come last. Okay? Um, this quiz should be easy for you because more or less half your life you spent at Bristol Rovers. Okay. Yeah. And it's, a, it's a quiz around Bristol Rovers for you. Um, okay. I would like to say, not to say that you've got no commitment to Chippenham because you've actually had a Chippenham tattoo, haven't you? So I have, fans, yeah. this is for the fans. If any of you want to see his Chippenham tattoo, you might see it at the top of his thigh. So that's <laughs> how much of the cause he's got. He's had to have it done over his Bristol Rovers tattoo though. <laughs> All right. So, do you feel you know Bristol Rovers there, uh, Luke? I'd like to think so. Yeah, like you said, I've been there for half of my life, so I'd like to think so. We'll, have, we'll give it a go. See how I get on. Okay. Right. Question one: Which of these players with 260 goals set the record for being Bristol Rovers all-time top goal scorer? Do you need the options? I'll have the options, please. Yes. Okay. Alfie Biggs. 
Harold Jarman. Okay, Ray Warren or Jeff Bradford? I'm going to go for Jeff Bradford. Do you know what, Cookie? That's why he's your favourite player, one out of one. Yeah. Uh, I would have been <laughs> if you got that wrong, to be fair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> About the ground now, um, Rossi, which of these grounds did uh, the club play at longest for their home games? Twerton Park, Ridgeway, Purdown, or Eastville? I'm going to go oh, either Twerton or Eastville, I think. I'm going to go Eastville. Again, two out of two. Superb. Come on. Yeah, he's just brilliant. Isn't he? <laughs> everything, he, everything he does. I told uh, you, Matt, he's a clever ginge. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> clever. Like, yeah, he is. Yeah. And he's, that's why he's your best mate. Okay. Not even who were Bristol Rovers playing when they set the record for the heaviest league defeat in 1936, so just before you were born? Who were they <laughs> playing? Okay. Uh, and what was the score? I, I think I've seen this somewhere, but I'm just going to guess. I'm going to go, oh, I don't know, Port Vale 29 0. A little bit ambition. I know you like Rovers, but they ain't that good. All right. Luton <laughs> Town, and it was 12 oh. 0. Oh, that's close. <laughs> yeah, unlucky. Okay, yeah. now one for the Rovers fans. Who originally sung the song Good Night, Irene? Oh, God knows. How can he not? That, Macca, that is a disgrace. I know how it goes, but I don't know who sings it. Okay. Do you want to sing it? I ring good night, I ring good night. Good night, I ring good night, I ring. I'll see you in my dreams. There we go. Can I get a point for that? No, Huddy Ledbetter. Nope. <laughs> and you are, and I can't believe you sung it. You've just done that, <laughs> yes, Marisians. In which year did Bristol Rovers move to the Memorial Stadium? M -m Memorial Stadium. 1999. <gasps> 1996. Unlucky. Oh. Okay, this one. Um, which member of West Ham United 1966 World Cup? Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm a West Ham fan, so it's, I think West oh, Ham okay. World Cup. Which member of the England 1996 World Cup winning side played for Bristol Rovers between 1982 and 1983? Now, you should know this. Why should I know this? I'm not giving you anything more. Shouldn't eat cookie. You should know this. I don't know it, mate. So I don't know. What you should about. know it. Was it I know West Terry Cooper? Terry Cooper. Terry Cooper never played played in the World Cup. Oh, do you know? Alan Ball he was in the World Cup squad. Though, Alan Ball. Alan Ball. My dad would have known that one. Yeah. Okay. That concludes the questions. And to be fair, out of six, you got two. But that's a you lot better given, than what's coming. Yeah. Could have given me some after I was Rossi, that ain't bad. That's quite That good. ain't bad. Yeah. We haven't got a very bright, bright squad, Rossi. So you, you, you're right <laughs> up there. In the top, you're in the top two. I'll tell you that. Thank you. <laughs> um, the only, the only what are you looking forward to most about this season then, Rossi? To be honest with you, Mac, just getting back playing, really. Like I said, it's been, it's been so long. And I think we could have a really good chance this year. I think the, the players that yourself, Cookie, the chairman, and everyone's brought in, I think it, we, we all suit each other perfectly. I mean, a lot of them know each other already. I mean, Marlon's best mates with Riggy. Um, obviously, Spence and Hanksy, we all know from Gloucester and things. So I think there's a really good team chemistry in and around it. And hopefully, we can have a good season and push on even better than last year. Yeah. Um, Cookie, we've had obviously the start date, but the first game looks like it's going to be an FA Cup tie. Um, what kind of preparations are we going to put in place as we as we gear up for those last two or three friendlies, ready for the like what in in everyone, especially in COVID nineteen time, sometimes the FA Cup becomes important. Yeah, um, we don't really do anything any different for the FA Cup. We're always going to have a look at the team we're going to play. It'd be interesting to find out how soon we will know what that team will be. 
Um, and then we either, you know, we go and get them watched or we'll, we'll see them on the video and analyse what they do well and what perhaps they've got a little few weaknesses. And then we just, you know, we'll, we'll prep the team around that, really. I mean, the, the only bad bit of news this year is that um, Phil Clark, who's the analysis guy, is not, not uh, going to be with us this year. So uh, we're on the lookout for an analysis guy, if, uh, if there's anybody tuning in as well who would like to, to do that. Um, it is a paid position and obviously it's a part-time position, but we are we're definitely looking for somebody to come in now. Um, and it, he will be sadly missed because he, he was one of those people that did analyse the opposition to the nth degree and he picked out some really interesting things, I thought, over the course of uh, last season especially. So he, he'll be missed. Um, but preparation is the same as normal and it's... Uh, you know, I don't care whether it's a league game or an FA Cup game. Personally, I just want to get started. Yeah, and I think Rossi, you mentioned it yesterday when we were training. How, like going to what Cookie said, how valuable um, Phil was and analysis work regarding your clips. Um, so you know what you're doing well, what you could do better, um, or even better if. Um, but also what we see from the, uh, like Cookie said, the opposition and and how much that, how important that is. That's worth points to us each season. I think it's a massive advantage and I couldn't believe, I mean, my first year on loan with Cookie, we had, we had a corner routine, it was like a pullback and it worked three or four times and I can't believe how many teams didn't pick it up, but I can't believe how many teams haven't got an analysis guy, I thought he'd give us a massive edge last year and the year before, just knowing a bit about the opposition, I mean, it's something that all football league teams have and it did give us an edge, so it'd be good to get, get someone in with Clark, he's well, similar to Clark, he, he, was, he was very good to be fair, but it does give us an edge and it gives us a little bit of knowledge on the opposition that maybe other teams don't have on us. Yeah, and I, th I think it is that real time where he's up in the gantry, he messages down, this is what it looks like from the top. And it gives Cookie, myself and Hosky an op opportunity to then to go to either adjust what we're doing to get a foothold in the game or continue what we're doing really well. Um, and and I, I totally agree. These small margins, Cookie, can be a matter of gaining a point or gaining three and not having one. Yeah, I think more often than not, he, he proved, um, you know, his, his weight and goal, really. The, the sort of things that he just gave us little tips, even if it was the opposition's goalkeeper on the way that they dive for their penalties or the opposition's penalty takers, which side they favour. And, you know, the most recent penalties that they did, there was, there was things that he did on the way that the opposition... Had scored goals, so if they were, you know, a goal a scoring team from wide, you know, he, he would say they've got this stats to back that up. So it was all all those sort of things that were really handy, and you know, you can prep the lads better because if if teams are attacking in in wide places and they're getting a lot of joy from it, then you know your fullbacks are going to have a bit of an ample. So you can work on things in training to not not to stop it, but you can alleviate um, some of it. Um, through just even standing in the right position, but you have to go through that with the lads. So um, yeah, he'll he'll be sorely missed, but hopefully we can we can get somebody in to replace him. And yeah, and the other thing is uh, we had such a good bunch of lads last year, and we have got this year. Is also we can then go and tell them, look, you're not doing this, you are doing this, continue. And there's no hiding place, and they're all honest enough to take that criticism or that praise on during um, the meetings on Thursday night. And, and, and that's going to be, look, I, I'm going to miss Phil because he was, I enjoyed taking the mick out of him. So that's what I'm going to miss the most. Um, but no, joking aside, he was a great lad and he will be missed. Um, that's pretty much it, Rossi. So you're off the hook. Um, well done. Look, like we said, we're He's glad you're with us. He's done very well. He's done very well. For, for someone who I thought would really struggle, he done had, really well. We had a private word before, didn't we, Matt? We thought he is going to struggle. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, even get, I even managed to get a sing-song in there as well. So. Yeah. Quietly yeah. impressed. Well done, Rossi. Cheers, Cheers guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Good stuff. See you tomorrow. Rossi.